There are a lot of Pokemon games. 37 mainline games to be exact. That's a lot of Pokemon. So if someone wanted to get into the games today, where would they even begin? So I thought to myself, what would be the optimal Pokemon play order? Being able to experience what the Pokemon franchise has offered through the years in the fewest amount of games possible. Without further ado, your boy It's Jahan is going to give you the absolute best way to experience the Pokemon video game franchise. Now for most of us, our first Pokemon game was whatever the newest Pokemon game was out at the time. But if you were just starting today, where would be the best place to start? Would it be the very first games? The most recent games? I think you could make a case for both. However, I believe the best place to start is Fire Red and Leaf Green. Now, there are a couple reasons why Fire Red and Leaf Green is the best entry point for the series. For starters, it's a Kanto game. There's no better starting point to Pokemon than the first generation of it. The iconic characters, the best rival, the music, the locations, and of course, the Pokemon. Now I already know what you're thinking. If starting at the beginning is so important, why not just start with Red and Blue instead? Why skips Gens 1 and 2 and start in 3? Well, Fire Red and Leaf Green have to be the most faithful remakes in the franchise, going as far to gate you from using any Pokemon that was not available in the original games in order to provide the most authentic Generation 1 experience. It also fixes a lot of the bugs and updates the graphics in a way that still mirrors the original. Now the reason we skip Gens 1 and 2 is because Generation 3 is when Pokemon really hit its stride mechanically, adding mechanics that became staples of the franchise. Abilities, double battles, which is the official tournament format by the way, the ability to run, the PC box interface, all of these changes made a world of a difference. These changes have become the base of every Pokemon game going forward, and will make each entry following it feel more familiar. Generation 1 has a lot of forgotten mechanics, such as Pokeballs missing, not being able to do anything when hit with a move like Rap, and the clunky storage system. All of these feel very foreign when compared to the bulk of the franchise, and don't add anything worthwhile to experience whatsoever. There's a reason why most of these were dropped after one generation. Overall, Fire Red and Leaf Green are the perfect starting point for our optimal play order. Following Fire Red and Leaf Green, we move on to Emerald and the Hoenn region, a whole new region with new Pokemon and new challenges. I like Emerald here in this second slot because it will be very familiar to those who just played Fire Red and Leaf Green, while offering a completely new experience. Now Generation 3 in my humble opinion has the best overall selection of new Pokemon, so I wouldn't be surprised if our hypothetical player comes out of these games with a new favorite Pokemon. Hoenn is also one of the most charming regions with its amazing soundtrack, visuals, characters, and areas to explore. If Kanto didn't hook you on the series, this one surely will. And because we're playing Emerald, if the player wishes, they can even take on the Battle Frontier, adding more of a challenge and countless hours of extra content. Overall, Emerald provides one of, if not the most enjoyable Pokemon experiences that just about anyone can enjoy. The next game in our playthrough is Pokemon Platinum. This is our first jump in graphics and visuals, where we begin to see how the franchise slowly evolves over the years, while visiting another beloved region, the Sinnoh region. Similarly to Gen 3, there's a lot to love here. One of the key things I want in our ideal playthrough is for the player to experience what each generation of Pokemon has to offer, and ultimately be able to participate in the discourse online about which is the best. In addition to iconic music, locations, and Pokemon, there's one thing above all else that Gen 4 is known for, Cynthia. Cynthia is by far one of the most iconic champions in the series. Every Pokemon fan remembers the first time challenging her and being destroyed by her Garchomp which makes that one memory when you finally beat her all the more sweeter. At this point in the playthrough, I'm confident our hypothetical player will have the chops to put up a good fight. Next on our journey is what I believe to be the best games in the franchise, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The Gen 4 remakes of Gold and Silver are by far the most complete Pokemon games. They are jam-packed with new and returning features ranging from following Pokemon to the Battle Frontier. These games present the Johto region, but with all the enhancements from Gens 3 and 4, polishing the clunkiness from the originals. And with this, our hypothetical player has experienced the first four generations of Pokemon. But that's not all, because unlike any other game in the franchise, HeartGold and SoulSilver have two regions to conquer. After you beat the champion in this game, you gain access to a juiced up version of the Kanto region, with another eight gym leaders to beat, and the true final boss, Red. 
I think beginning with a Gen 1 game and ending it off versing yourself in the place you started is very cathartic and creates a nice endpoint for this package of games. From here, you'll have a definite answer whether you like the series or not, and can basically proceed to any game you like. But we are far from finished. The next games up in our objective play order are Black and White. If you got bored seeing the same Gen 1 to 4 Pokemon in the last 4 games, you're in luck, because the only Pokemon available in Black and White are the 156 new Pokemon they added. Now this was a very polarizing change for most players. Some people love it, some people hate it. Me personally, I would have liked the change if the new designs were a little bit more curated. But with Black and White, you get to see the finale of the 2D pixel era, complete with the amazing animated sprites, and experience the Pokemon games that most people would point to as having the best story. That being said, we get to the part that's probably going to rustle some people's jimmies, because in our ideal play order, we're going to be skipping Black and White 2. Let's be real, Black and White are the real Gen 5 experience. While Black and White 2 are amazing games, they are a result of Game Freak dialing back the changes that made Black and White what they are. Reintroduction of old Pokemon, less story driven, overall closer to your typical Pokemon experience. While I would have loved to showcase one of the best editions of all time, the Pokemon World Tournament, there really isn't enough new here for me to justify making someone play through Unova again. Now from here on out, you'd basically continue on playing each flagship game from each gen. So after Black and White, you'd go to X and Y, then Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, and finally Scarlet and Violet. Now you may have noticed, this list essentially goes in release order. And that's because I personally believe backtracking in a franchise distorts your experience. You see, when you play a previous game in a series, it may not have some of the game mechanics, quality of life changes, or even graphics you've become accustomed to, which can sometimes go as far as to completely ruin your experience of a game. Just the feeling alone of a feature missing can make a game feel lesser by comparison, even if that missing feature was never meant to be there in the first place. For example, players who got used to the party-wide XP share may have their experience soured when playing a game before Generation 6, where XP is not shared with the entire party. But regardless, this order would give you a complete overview of the series, while playing the least amount of games possible, experiencing everything that each gen has to offer. As you can see though, this video isn't over yet. What more is there to talk about? Well, what if you're really pressed on money and time to play these games? I mean, have you seen the prices of old Pokemon games? As much as I think this is the best way to play the Pokemon franchise, playing 9 games from beginning to end is quite a lot. So, what if we took it a step further and made an even more concise play order, dropping some games but still getting a good grasp of the franchise? For the purpose of this video, I'm going to make it a challenge for myself and try to encapsulate 28 years of Pokemon in only 5 games. Here we go. Similarly to last time, we started Fire Red and Leaf Green. Again, it's just the best landing point for anyone who wants to get into the series. If you know me well, you'll know just how much this will pain me. But in this play order, we skip Emerald and Platinum. As controversial as that seems, I'll address that later on, and jump straight to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Not only does it give the player a taste of Gen 4, it's also just straight up a sequel to the Kanto games, making perfect sense to play it right after Fire Red and Leaf Green. Playing these two games gives you a taste of generations 1, 2, 3, and 4 while only playing two games. Next up, we go to Black and White. Gen 5 is so far removed from the others narratively and visually that the only way to really get that experience is by playing these games. However, this can easily change when the inevitable remakes come out. Remember how we skipped Gen 4? Well, in these games, you still get a bit of that Sinnoh experience by fighting none other than Miss Gen 4 herself, Cynthia. So not all of Gen 4 is missed. Speaking of which, remember how this time we skipped over Emerald? You didn't think I'd leave out one of the best regions, did you? Because instead of playing X and Y, this time, we go to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. This clever switch doubles up as your Gens 3 and 6 representation, experiencing the Hoenn region with the flair of Generation 6. Most people would probably agree that Kalos isn't the most memorable region, aside from Mega Evolution, which just so happens to play a central part in the Hoenn remakes. Last but not least, the fifth and final game in our optimal play order light version is Scarlet and Violet. Gen 9 is what the entire 3D era of Pokemon has been building toward. While Gen 7 and 8 both have very distinct flavors and experiences, neither of them perfect the 3D formula for Pokemon. Gen 7 as a whole aimed to be a deconstruction of the traditional Pokemon formula, getting rid of gyms and adding regional forms to reinvent returning Pokemon. However, 
Every new change in Gen 7 felt undercooked. The trials got lazier as the game went on, and just felt like a more tedious version of gym battles, making me kinda wish they just stuck with gyms instead. Majority of the regional forms just felt like knockoffs, and Z-moves were the lamest gimmick by far. Gen 8 was the first home console Pokemon game, and with that jump, wanted the series to evolve in a big way. The biggest selling point in the Galar region is the Wild Area, an open world area of the map where wild Pokemon can be seen walking around just like how we imagined it as kids. However, this is only for one boxed in area of the map, and not to reopen old wounds, but doesn't look that great. The rest of the game basically plays the same as the 3DS ones, with a fixed camera and normal random encounters. The only thing you're really missing out by skipping Gen 8 is Leon, which you can just watch the finale of the Pokemon anime if you want to see him. Gen 9 on the other hand is a fully realized 3D Pokemon game, and like I mentioned earlier, is what Gen 7 and 8 have been building toward. It's a complete open world Pokemon game that deconstructs the usual formula of Pokemon and is complete with its very own gimmick. The most recent generation is the perfect point to end it off, giving you the complete scope of what the franchise has produced through the years. And there you have it, not one, but two ways to play through the series. Again, this is the optimal play order. The light mode is more of a last resort if the optimal way isn't an option. But I want to know what you guys think. Is there anything I missed or shouldn't have made the cut? I'm confident this is the absolute best way, so I challenge you guys to come up with something better. I make sure to read every comment, so let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. It really helps your boy out. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Ciao, fellas.